All right, quick overview or refresher of thermochem from last semester. Remember, energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. Um, first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy, which says energy can't be converted uh, from can be converted from one form to another, but it's not destroyed or created. Um, the total amount of the energy of the universe is constant. Oftentimes, we're converting it into unusable por uh, energy, so it seems if it, as if it's lost, but it's not. For instance, the combustion of fossil fuels is converted to a different kind of energy that it's hard to conserve that, if you will, but it is constant. Uh, very basic potential energy is the energy due to position or composition. So you have potential energy stored in your bonds, like bond energy. Kinetic energy is the energy due to the motion of an object. Depends on mass and velocity. Um, there you go. Potential energy is she's holding the ball. Kinetic energy is she dropped the ball. Okay. That. I feel like she did with the curved arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Curved arrow. Okay. Um, if you haven't seen this formula yet in your lifetime, well, then I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. Okay. We're going to be using joules as our energy, so just in case you want to know where a joule comes from, it comes from kilograms times meters. Oh, forgot the little dot. That's supposed to be a dot right there. Is it a dot in your notes? Put a dot in your notes if you want to. Well, if I do this on this program, if I try to do a dot, it like brings up a new window and thinks I want to like do something. I could do it this way. Hold on, just for Natan. This is for Natan. Watch this. I can make my font super big, and then I'll get a dot. There you go. For you, Natan, there's a dot. Okay. Oh, is it in the wrong location now? Oh, my gosh, Natan, you're picky. Okay. Heat. Heat involves a transfer of energy between two objects due to their temperature difference. Please recall that temperature and heat are not the same thing. Um, work is force acting over distance, and it involves a transfer of energy. Okay, these are all basic concepts. Temperature, property that reflects random motions of the particles of a particular substance. What happens when I heat them up? Speed them up. Speed them up. Yeah. So if you, uh, and then what is directly related to kinetic energy? Temperature. Temperature. What is not directly related to the temperature? Velocity, right. Velocity is we want to know what's what do we look at for velocity? Uh, mass. Mass, right. that's right. There, there we go. Uh, exothermic, boy, this is basic review. Exothermic releases, okay, energy flows out of the system. Potential energy is changed to thermal energy, and products have a lower potential energy than their reactants. There's an example. We can write that one of two ways. We can write it in the equation. If we write it in the equation, we write it as a product. If we're writing it outside of the equation, we do delta H equals negative. Okay? Next for endothermic. Oh, there's what exothermic looks like. Okay, your reactants have more energy than your products because they release the energy. Okay? And then endothermic, I absorb the heat. Energy flows into the system. Uh, thermal energy is changed into potential energy. And your products have a higher potential energy because they absorbed it during the reaction. Um, when we're writing it as a thermochemical equation, we write it as a reactant. And then when we write it out as just delta H, it's positive. I hope that all of this is ringing a bell. Okay, good. There's endothermic. It's a funky-looking graph, if you ask me. I don't like the... Okay. Uh, the system is our reaction. Everything else is the surroundings. Okay? So when we're doing our lab, if we're doing calorimetry, our systems... Inside the cup, our surrounding is outside the cup. Duh. What is the cup? Internal energy of a system is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of all the particles in the system. There we have delta E is equal to Q plus W. Uh, delta E is the change in the energy's internal energy. Q is heat. And W is work. And it's usually going to be in joules or kilojoules. I'm going through this fast because it's a review. Am I going too fast? Okay, good. Thermodynamics quantities always consist of a number and a sign, positive or negative. The sign represents the system's point of view. 
engineers use the surrounding point of view, but we are not engineers, we are chemists in here. I'm an engineer. No, not yet you're not. Sorry. Hey. Yeah, I I would I highly doubt that. I do not care how it What do chemical engineers use? Good, good question. <laughs> okay. Exothermic is negative Q because it is releasing, going away from the, sy the system. Endothermic is positive Q because the system's energy is increasing. So work uh, energy is being added to the system. Um, there's a very good sign convention. I would... You might want to write that down. That's not a bad thing to write down, even though this is a review. Because guess what the box represents? System. Oh, I'm still on big. I'm still on. I'm still on the giant like points there. Okay. Okay. Are we good with our box and our arrows? Are we still drawing? I actually really like that. I should I should add that visual into original thermochem. Yeah, I like that convention. Yeah. It was like meant to be a review, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, am I good? Moving on. Okay, example. Uh, calculate delta E if Q is equal to negative 50 kilojoules and work is equal to a plus 35 kilojoules. You do it. I'm going to pause. Okay, what should that look like? It should look like this. There's our equation. Negative 50 plus 35 equals negative 15 kilojoules. How did I get 53? Ha-ha, <laughs> Tyler Moss. Okay, for a gas that expands or is compressed, work can be done uh, or can be calculated by W equals uh, negative P delta V. I hope you know by now that P is pressure and V is volume. Hope you know that little delta sign was really reviewed. Delta means change in. Yeah. Okay. Um, this, the units are liter atmosphere, uh, which is the equivalent to 101.325 joules, but that's not tested on the AP exam. That's just FYI. It's just bonus information. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, calculate the work if the volume of a gas is increased from 15 milliliters to 2 liters at constant pressure of 1.5 atmosphere. Going to make you work that one yourself, too. Did we ever discuss... All right, let's see how you did. How would we work this one? Work is equal to negative P delta V. Uh, we got negative 1.5 atmosphere times the change in volume. And so it would be a negative 3.0 liters. Man, y'all are good. Yeah. Okay. Um, at constant pressure, the terms heat of reactions and change in enthalpy are used interchangeably. Oh, remember enthalpy? It's a what? It's H. H. Okay. What? I'm just telling you that they're equal. Okay. Here we go. Example for a stoichiometric calculation. If I had this reaction and it tells me what delta H is, what would the uh, heat exchange for 3.5 grams, okay, would look like this. We'll do this one together. You would divide 3.8 gram, 3.5 grams by the molar mass of sodium, and then you would look at that reaction and said that that delta H value is for 2 moles of sodium. So your conversion factor would be the 368 uh, kilojoules divided by 2 of the apps. All right. They should have put the negative sign in there, or you would have to just remember to carry the negative sign to the end because it was an exothermic reaction. So, so for, for 3.5 grams, you would have a negative 28 kilojoules being released. Does that ring a bell? Stoichiometric relationship. Stoichiometry never goes away. Yeah. Okay, can I move on? Okay. Uh, calorimetry, again, uh, it is the science of measuring heat flow. It's based on observing the temperature change when an a object either absorbs or discharges heat. We call that a calorimeter. There's a lot of different kinds. The simplest one is uh, a coffee cup calorimeter. 
uh, in free AP, we did the, uh, we found the heat capacity of metals, and we had that little metal. I don't know if you remember, it was like a little metal thing. It had a hole in the top, and we lowered it through. We heated up the metal, so that was another type. Um, calorimetry can be used to find delta H for the reaction, um, or we can find the specific heat. Remember, if something has a high specific heat, um, as like water, like uh, water does, then it takes it a long time to heat up, takes it a long time to cool down. So water has a very high specific heat. Metals have a very low specific heat. They're usually like point something because they heat up really quickly, but they also cool down very quickly. Uh, there is, uh, the lines are in the wrong spot. Sorry about that. I can't fix them right now. Uh, it's joules over gram C or joules over mole C. Pay attention to the units because it's a big difference if I'm doing a molar heat capacity, which is the joules over moles de degree C. Also, you can change out degree C, and it can be Kelvin, so pay attention to that as well. So always look at the unit, because that has caught some people uh, in the past when it was a molar heat capacity, and they did grams, and they really just needed to convert to moles. So just pay attention to that, okay? Um, there's just some substances. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to write that down, just so you can see the difference. Uh, see where water has just a really, really high specific heat, okay? Water makes actually a really good insulator because it takes so long to um, heat up and cool down. Uh, there are our enthalpy of fusion and vaporization. Fusion is solid to liquid, but it's also liquid to solid. You would just change the sign, right? Okay which would be negative, going from solid to liquid or liquid to solid? You get more energy than liquid, so it would be positive when you're fusing liquid. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't ask. I said which one is going to be negative, solid to liquid or liquid to solid? Liquid to solid because it's got to release heat, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, vaporization, same as condensation, depending on which direction you're going. Okay. Uh, energy released is heat. We got our MCAT equation. That's Daniel's favorite equation, he said earlier. I didn't say I was the best at it, but I said it was. It's your favorite equation. It's the MCAT equation, okay? Uh, and then, so here we go. Um, do y'all want me to just walk you through the calculation, or do you want to try it? Walk through it. Walk okay. All right, so we have 150 grams of uh, water, and we have 110 gram blocks of molly Um We heat it to 100 degrees Celsius, then place the water in the calorimeter. The contents uh, come to a final temperature of 28. What is the heat capacity per gram of molly denim? Okay, so first thing we want to do is we're going to do MCAT. Okay, our delta T is going to be 3.4. We're doing the water here, okay? So water rose by 3.4 grams, so that means that the water absorbed 2,132 joules. If that is how much heat that the water absorbed, that's the amount of heat that the molybdenum, which is the real way to say it, um, lost. Do you understand that? So now I'm going to do what to my sign of joules? Huh? I'm going to make it negative because that is how much it lost. It should put a negative sign in there. They're taking the, what they're doing there is they're taking the negatives out and they're not doing uh, delta, they're keeping delta T positive. When we did that in the past, we would have said this is negative and the 72 is negative because normally it's like uh, final, my, final, my, final, someone say it for me. Final minus initial, okay? So they're just doing it that way to keep it. But that's the way we did it in pre-AP, okay? All right. One more, and then we are done pretty much almost very close to being done with this review. Here we have four grams of ammonium nitrate added to water. Uh, determine the heat of solution in kilojoules per mole. Assume that heat absorbed by the calorimeter is negligible, okay? So... Q is equal to MCAT, solve for Q, so we get uh, 1,391 joules absorbed, or 1.39 kilojoules, because it did ask for kilojoules per mole. Oh, look, this might be coming, 
familiar or come in handy for our lab we do. Just saying. Okay. We know that uh, if I take four grams, we're missing the rest of that. I was like, where's the rest of it? If I, that's supposed to be a line right here. <coughs> okay. So if I take my four grams and I divide by the molar mass, that I, I get that we had 0.085 moles, and then kilojoules divided by moles gives me the molar heat of solution. Any questions on what was happening there? Calculated my heat. Why did you add the four <coughs> grams into water? Because it's total mass of the solution. Okay. Yeah, good call right there. Why is that 104 and not 100? Yeah. Because uh, it's the total mass of solution when I'm calculating Q. Okay. Now, I wouldn't do this with the metal because it's not dissolving, right? But this dissolves. Oh. So this is a solution now, but we have to do the whole mass of the solution. So that was a really good question, Shannon. So is a milliliter always around that? Huh? Water. Mm -hmm. For water, yes, because what is the density of water? One gram per milliliter. So when you see milliliters, you have grams of water. If I if it was diff something different, they would have to give you the density to be able to convert that. Yeah, but you do have to add this four grams to that because we made a solution. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay, is everybody done before I move on? Okay. <coughs> oh, there's their line. Hi, I just didn't do enough. Uh, extensive properties, remember, depend on the amount of substance. Intensive properties depend on the amount of the substance. Doesn't depend. Depends on the identity. Okay. Um, that's way back from Kim 1, like intensive property is identity of a problem. Like, for instance, water has a density of 1 grams per milliliter. That's an intensive property. It doesn't matter how much water I have, whether I have 100 milliliters or 200 milliliters, I'd still density of water because it's water. That's an intensive property. Extensive is how much of it you got. Like, I have 100 grams, I have 100 milliliters, I have 100 degrees, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, heat of reaction is extensive. That's it because it depends on the amount. Temperature is intensive. Hess's law, delta H, enthalpy. Remember, the change in enthalpy is the same whether reaction occurs in one step or several steps. It is independent of the reaction pathway. Um, remember how we did the sum of delta H for each? Remember when we changed the equations and just add them up? Okay, I'm going to remind you how to do that because we can do that with a, one of our quantities in thermodynamics. But that's basically when I have this kind of problem. I don't think this is in, is this in your notes? Okay, so I'm trying to get to the 2C plus H2 yields C2H2. Those are the three equations that I have available for me to do that with. I am going to pause the video there and challenge you to get that because I want you to remember how to do that. Zooming. All right, here we go. So what do we have to do? We have to uh, take the second equation uh, and multiply by 2. So whatever we do to the equation, we also do to delta H. We have to keep the first, the third equation the same, and then we had to uh, reverse the other equation. And then we change the sign, so we add it all up. 226.7. Okay. How about this one? We're just going to go through this one together. What do I need to do here? Which one am I trying to get to? It's just in the. Yeah, so it would be negative 10. You might want to just jot that in the margin, negative 110.5, and then go back and see if you can get it because I am already spending more time on review of Thermochem than I want to. Okay. Uh, remember the definition for standard heat, heat of formation is for one mole and one mole only of a compound from its constituent elements um, with the standard uh, s states, okay, at 25 degrees Celsius. One mole, when we're doing that little F, that means we are only forming one mole.
okay? Uh, standard states as a refresher, gas is one atmosphere. If it's a solution, it's one molar. The standard state is the form at which the element exists at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius, so basically room temperature. Most things are a solid at room temperature. There are two liquids, and then there's a handful of gases, okay? There, y'all remember this equation? Products minus reactants. That's in there. Uh, so let's do this one right quick. Go with your bad selves. <laughs>